Welcome back survivalists. So today we're gonna to take a look at this $250 survival kit from Emergency Zone. So this is their two person bug out bag. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of break down what exactly they include in their survival kit, kind of give you my thoughts on them. And you can use this as inspiration of what components and elements you wanna include in your own survival kit. Now, full disclosure, they actually did send this to me for free, but it's not a paid review or anything like that. I really just want to see if they have all of the elements that go into a good survival kit. If you guys are interested in the specific one, I'll have a link to it down below. And I'll also try to link to as much of the individual items that I find in this survival kit as well. So let's just kind of jump right into and get started. So one of the first components of a good survival kit is going to be the actual bag itself. And one thing that they are doing that I really like is that they're going with the whole gray man concept to this, which is that they're not going with a super tactical and militaristic bag. You don't have a lot of Velcro patches and Molly gear on here. You have something that people probably wouldn't notice. If you had this in the trunk of your car or in your office or in your home, people would glance right over it because it's just a bland vanilla bag. So I really like that aspect to it. It also has a lot of pockets on here. You can see that they have several different layers of pockets on here. And I think that's really important as well in a bag because you know, when you have this much gear, staying organized with all of it is a bit of a challenge. And a lot of times I am guilty of this. I literally just throw all my gear in like a duffel bag or something and it's all just kind of mixed in there. So having some organization to it and having all these individual layers and you can see all the individual pockets that they have out front, that is a pretty important component, I think, to a good survival kit bag. And you just see that it keeps opening up with different layers. Another thing that this bag has, which I really like, um, is that these straps back here can actually tuck back into the bag and it actually has handles on all three of the sides. So each side here and the top side here. So you don't necessarily actually need to use this as a backpack. Um, and it's so heavy, it, you probably don't necessarily want to either. So you can literally just use this more of a suitcase. You can grab one of these handles. And again, keep it in your car, keep it in your office, keep it up in your closet, something like that. Now with the straps themselves, um, they are comfortable enough. You know, it's, you know, there's a lot of components that go into a good hiking backpack and you can spend $150 just on a good hiking backpack. And I'll say that this wasn't exactly the most comfortable backpack when I tried it on. And it, it, a lot of the weight is kind of leaning forward. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily want to go hike 10 miles with this, but I could if I had to. You know, it does have some lumbar support back here as well as some thoracic padding up here for your upper back. And it does have some hip straps here to go around your waist as well as some chest straps here, which are all like pretty good components to have. So overall, I'd say that this bag is, it's like good enough. It's, it's, it's adequate. Um, and I really do like that it has these handles and the straps can kind of go back inside the bag. Again, I wouldn't necessarily want to go hiking 10 miles with this thing on, but if you had to, you could. Now they're selling this as a bug out bag, but truthfully, bug out situations are very, very uncommon. It, going back the last hundred years, here in America, it, there's only a handful of situations where somebody would have to actually like bug out and it would be on a very short term basis. Most of the time you're gonna use a survival kit like this because some sort of natural disaster, a flood, a hurricane, earthquake, tornado, a blizzard, something along those lines. So in most situations, the straps and using this as a backpack is not that relevant. You can just use these side handles instead. Well, let's go ahead and open this thing up and really take a look here. So you got a front pouch here, has nothing in it. You have this pouch here, again, has nothing in it. And then this pouch here is where you really start getting some items. That's all in this front pouch here. So we have a water bladder here um, with a straw. So this is nice. This is sort of like a camelback. So you could fill this up and have the straw coming out of the top of your backpack and coming around and you can drink out of it while you are, you're hiking with it. Yeah, I like that aspect a lot. I didn't actually see any holes in the actual strap itself or in the bag itself for, um, a hose like that, but you could probably just open up the, the zipper a little bit and have those hoses coming out. So that's not a bad component at all. Um, I also love that they included these. And these, I definitely, I've recommended these before too for bug out bags um, and survival kits and camping gear in general. 
And this is probably about a gallon right here. And it's super lightweight and this can fill up and probably be about a gallon of water that you can store in this. And it's got a little handle right there. You know, in a survival situation, water is a critical, critical component. We saw this down in Texas when they had that, uh, that blackout in the middle of winter. Everybody's pipes were freezing. They couldn't get any clean drinking water. People had to resort to boiling water. So with something like this, if you had to go over to a friend's house and boil some water and purify it, probably let it cool down first, but then you can pour it into a container like this and use this for easy transportation of clean drinking water. You could have one for dirty water and then one for clean drinking water if you wanted to. But these things are super cheap and they're just really cool. Like they can fold up really compact. They are super, super light. And just the fact that you can carry I'm guessing about a gallon of water in something like this is super nice. So this is pretty cool that they included these. These things, you know, they only really be started becoming popular in like the last like 10 years. You go back 10 years before, uh, you don't really see these anywhere. I don't ever remember seeing those. So this is cool that, you know, one of the first elements on top here is focused on water. Um, and that should be a focus. You know, hydration is going to be critical in a survival situation. We open this up. And right on the top, we have uh, a little notebook in a Ziploc bag, so I like that. And actually, I also like the Ziploc bag. Um, a lot of people don't think about this, but Ziploc bags like this make a great addition to a survival kit or a bug out bag. Um, again, for transporting water, but also for transporting, you know, fish or uh, food or meat, something like that. If you have a fish that you can cook, cook the meat, keep it, store away inside a Ziploc bag like this. So here you've got a small pencil. I like that. And yes, so this is a survival manual right here. That is a great addition. You know, I have a video, uh, top 10 forgotten bug out bag items. And one of the items that I list off is a pocket survival guide. And I got a lot of flack on that video, but having something like this is, is crucial. Um, you know, when you're dehydrated and you're malnourished and you're stressed, Remembering all these tips and techniques and first aid, it can be very difficult. So having something like this that you can review and reference is going to be uh, pretty important. Yeah, I like this. This actually looks like a really good uh, little survival manual that they included in this. And I like that you get a pencil with that as well. So moving along, the next item here is from Emergency Zone. It's their heat saver uh, emergency blanket. I believe so. Let's open this up as well. Heat saver, dual layer, layer insulating blanket. Yeah, so this is like a thermal thermal blanket that they have here. Yeah, so there's the thermal part to it. Yeah, I like that. And it's interesting that it's dual layer like that. Let's take a look. Um, so you got insulation pocket reflection layer. Yeah, so these, let me take this off. So that's a big uh, emergency blanket there as well. And that's really interesting that they have the two layers with that, but that's definitely a great thing to have in any emergency kit. It, it's pretty amazing how warm those things will keep you. You can get pretty toasty with something like that. You know, and you know, regulating your body's temperature is pretty important in a lot of emergency situations. Uh, and so it looks like they have two of these actually. And that is actually, I mean, it looks big enough that you could probably get some sort of shelter going with something like this as well. So I love that they included that. I definitely agree with that. Um, and those things, again, they're so lightweight and cheap that you should definitely include those in your own survival kit. So this one is actually made by Emergency Zone as well. So let's move on. So first off, I also wanna say how much I love how organized they are with all this gear. I love that everything has its own Ziploc bag to stay dry in case your bag gets wet and everything has its own little spot and it's just getting organized. So this looks like it is your own like personal care kit. Again, of course, in its own uh, little bag here. So we open it up, we have a, um, you know, like a respirator, a face mask there. You've got a washcloth. That may be a tampon, I think, or a pad. 
Uh, you get the idea. And it has toothpaste, it has shaving cream, soap, toothbrush, um, some ointments and stuff, a comb, two toothbrushes. So yeah, that's your personal hygiene kit. And I think a lot of the stuff in here, people often forget to include in their bung out bags. You could probably build a little a backup personal hygiene kit like this, um, you know, at your dollar store. Each of these things may be a dollar less than that. So you actually got two pads in here. I, you know, I mean, I've, I've seen people argue that you can use pads like this for uh, first aid, and there's a few other, you know, improvised uses for pads like that. But, you know, a lot of emergency situations, um, people, their hygiene goes out the window. People get just, like, filthy. We think about the hurricanes that hit, like, the Gulf Coast, and people lose power for a week, and they're in 80-degree weather. And after, you know, if there's a lot, if there's a flood, and then the flood water recedes, there's a lot of like dead fish and dead animals all over the place, a lot of septic that gets mixed in with those flood waters. So a lot, you know, and just imagine being in that without taking a shower or anything like that. A lot of those situations, like people just get filthy. And so hygiene is pretty important in that. And having some clean soap and a washcloth as like a backup, I, I think that actually is a really critical component. And those are super cheap, not something super, super inexpensive that you can buy for your own emergency uh, kit. Build a little um, hygiene kit like this. So I love what they've done here. So there's really only two other compartments, it looks like. They got one bag here with a lot of gear in it. And then they have another bag here with a lot of gear in it as well. So I love, I love how organized this is. I really do. And these have individual handles. You can actually see inside of them, so you can see what's in there. I like the red, so you, you know you can easily find it. Um, this is pretty cool. I like this a lot. Now they also have their first aid kit, and I think that is about it for the bag. So let me get this bag out of the way. There's nothing really else in that bag. Everything else is in these two smaller bags here. Yeah, these are really cool. I love the idea of compartmentalizing things like this. So this is their first aid kit. Um, and the first aid kits for emergencies, they don't really have to be that elaborate, honestly. Just some basic first aid. One thing I don't like is that this is black. You know, it actually almost blended in with the backpack there. A lot of times you want your first aid kit to be bright red. Something like this, or bright orange, you really want it to stand out. You don't want something that's going to blend in like this. Um, yeah, so that's kind of an odd choice that they have this blending in. But you open it up, um, I mean it looks like a really good first aid kit. First aid kits are pretty inexpensive, $20, you could probably buy something like this. I'm not going to dive into each individual component, but this looks like a pretty uh, well thought out and pretty elaborate first aid kit. So let's stick this to the side here. So I'm not, I'm not wild about the bag that they chose for that. This though is a cool idea. I love the red because it's easy to see. They should have the first aid kit be red as well. And I love that you can actually see what is inside of these items as well. That's like, that is really cool. Um, I'll be honest, a lot of my own bags, I would have taken all this gear and all this gear and just thrown it in one bag. You know, I'm not the most organized, so I really appreciate when kits are organized. So let's go ahead and open this up. And yeah, so you have quite a bit in here. So first off, you've got a compass. Um, yeah, that is definitely a great um, tool to have. A compass and a reflector mirror here. You know, obviously having a compass and being able to navigate is a really crucial um, tool to have and they're pretty inexpensive. You've got two ponchos to help you stay dry. So I like, I like that a lot. And again, they've got compartments inside of compartments. I love that, man. I like that a lot. I don't know why I'm getting excited about just the organization of this. So we've got a, uh, a tool in here, a multi-tool. You know, I just did a video of what items um, the Red Cross wants you to keep in your home and having a good multi-tool is one of them. Um, now, I don't see any branding on here. So it's, it's not a Gerber. It, it does feel a little bit cheaper. You know, it's definitely on the cheaper side, but I'm sure it could get the job done. That's pretty interesting. It actually has a spring here between that. You don't typically see that on multi-tools, but it looks like it's got everything in there that you really need. Got a can opener. It's got um, a, 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 like a tape measure thing, a, um, a ruler to measure distances. 
Um, yeah, you know it's in a multi-tool, so it looks like it's got everything in here that you really need. It does feel a little bit more on the cheaper side. It's not as high quality as a Gerber. This is probably like, like a $20 multi-tool if I had to guess the price on it. But, you know, it, for emergency situation, this thing is perfectly fine. It looks solid enough like it can get the job done. So we keep going. This has so got a little compass on the back end. You got an emergency whistle. Yeah, that's nice to have. People really undervalue an emergency whistle. If you think back to Katrina, when everybody, their homes completely got flooded and people were literally trapped in their attics and trapped on their roofs, when rescuers are going by and you're probably, your voice is probably hoarse, having this <whistles> to notify them is going to be pretty uh, important. It's not the best whistle, huh? So you have a little compartment inside, um, you got a little mirror in there, I'm not really sure what that's for. breaking things here so I mean all right so this thing does feel a little a little bit on the cheap side okay and that whistle does work there's something inside of there I just can't find it you know I'm sure this probably has some other uses that I'm not really picking up on right away but nonetheless having a whistle is really good I'm sure that compass on the back is probably trash uh, but they give you a good compass nonetheless so glow sticks, I'm a big fan of glow sticks. Glow sticks are super cheap, and I'll be honest, whenever I lose power, this is one of the first things I go to. I grab a glow stick, I crack it open, and that allows me to kind of set everything else up. You've got some nylon cord. So this is sort of like paracord. I don't know if it actually is the brand paracord, but this is uh, some nylon cordage here. So that's definitely a good thing to have. I actually have a video all about how to tire cordage in a knot like this. I really like it. If you find the end, you can pull cordage out of this and still kind of keep this general shape to it. So I like that a lot. I like with the cordage, you can do a lot of stuff with some good cordage like that. Got a deck of cards. Yeah, so I talk about this a lot in a lot of my videos that complacency kills, you know, and if you are in a survival situation and you get bored, you know, after like five days of being trapped in your house, People get bored and that's when they make mistakes. That's when they get reckless is when they, you know, they just get so tired of being cooped up in the house. So keeping you and your family kind of entertained and kind of keeping your brain stimulated and focused on something other than, you know, just sitting there waiting for rescue uh, can be really, really important. So I, I really, I'm happy to see that they included this. That That's one of the items that I actually have on um, in a lot of my videos I talk about having some sort of activity, some sort of board games or deck of cards or something. You've got some uh, fluorescent um, duct tape here. Tape ball, I'm not familiar with that brand. But yeah, obviously this is a great thing to have. It is amazing how many uses duct tape, tape like this has. One of the first things that I would do with this is take a big strip of this and put it on your damn first aid kit so you don't go and lose this thing because it's a black bag. You know, that should be bright orange, or they should take some of this and put it on their um, their first aid kit. But obviously, this is a great thing to have for many, many different reasons. And then you've got some work gloves. Again, really important. You know, uh, like I keep thinking back to like the hurricanes that hit the Gulf Coast, you know, and after those floodwaters recede, you, you, you're going to go out there. You want to pick up all the trash and everything out there. And in a situation like that, if you get a cut on your hand from a loose nail on a board or something, that can be a really bad situation right there. So having some good work gloves is definitely pretty critical. Uh, and then they've got this little guy here, which I'm guessing is a can opener. This is... Or, yeah, I think this is like a manual can opener. Um, I'm, that's... Pretty sure what that is. It feels kind of cheap and flimsy, but I'm pretty sure that is what that is. So moving along, the next thing that they have is two reflective sleeping bags. So this is using the same material as those heat blankets or the thermal blankets to reflect your body's heat back towards you. And they've got two of those, and that's definitely a good thing to hold on to and keep. Uh, I'll be honest, these things are probably not comfortable at all. Probably It probably sucks sleeping one of these things, but it will keep you warm, and that's really the important thing. Uh, so we then also have a pocket handsaw. Um, 
yeah, these things are great to have uh, if you're doing any sort of bushcraft or any sort of camping stuff, going out, um, these things is, is like invaluable. This should be, if you're doing going camping, this should be one of the first items that you include um, when you're going camping, right? You can't really use a knife or something to saw through uh, branches and create smaller pieces of branches. So having something like this is pretty important. This does feel pretty cheap. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I bet you, if I wanted to, I could probably go out there and break this pretty easily um, if I'm a little rough with it. So this particular one, you're probably gonna wanna be kind of careful uh, using this. It does have a locking mechanism on it, but truthfully, like my locking mechanism is already a little bent there. I guess that is supposed to go like that and that locks it in place. Yeah, this thing just feels really pretty flimsy and cheap, but nonetheless, having a handsaw like this is a really good thing to have if you're going camping, doing any sort of bushcraft or in your survival kit. Uh, so next up, we have the 4-in-1 Emergency Flashlight. Um, yeah, I love emergency flashlights. I love uh, ones, I like ones that have the solar panels in them. So let's take a look at what is included in this one. Uh, so no solar panel, but it does have a hand crank in it. And it does have a emergency radio. So that's definitely really nice. You know, I'm always preaching emergency radios in my YouTube videos. Again, I'm a little disappointed this particular one doesn't have the, um, there you go. So it does work already just from a few cranks. It doesn't have the solar panel, so you can't just leave this out in the daytime. But nonetheless, like, this is really great to have. You can see just a few cranks. I've never opened this up before and I've got a working flashlight. So that's actually pretty effective and I'm pretty happy with that. And you've got your emergency radio built right into it. Um, plus it looks like it has, yeah, so it has a charger that can plug into a USB device. So if you do have a disaster situation, you're living off your survival kit for a few days, you can go out to your car and charge this up from your car and then bring it into the house and then you've got your AM, FM radio. Um, so that's definitely a really nice component that you can charge this yourself. If you have a solar panel that you can connect to a USB device, you could charge it off of that, but they don't have the actual US uh, solar panel built into it. Again, this one does feel, it feels a little, a little cheap um, as well. But you know, a lot of these things, you're only really gonna use them maybe one time, uh, you know, so it's not, something you're gonna be using on a daily basis. But having this is definitely a great, great component in uh, your own survival kit. And finally, you're getting to the knife. This is probably what most people get most excited about uh, with building a bug out bag. And this is, so it just says survival knife on there. No brand, I don't even know what brand this is. It literally just says survival knife. Let's take a look here. So it's a little bit smaller than uh, I was expecting. And yeah, it just says Survivor on it, the back end of it. So th this looks like a, um, a K-Bar, is that what they used to be? So you open it up, you've got your cheap little compass on the back here, uh, a little tube with a couple of matches and so a little mini survival kit built right into the handle. So you got some matches and you got some fish hooks there. So I gotta be honest, most of these gimmicky things, uh, survival knives and stuff, they're they're pretty cheap and pretty crappy. You know, the handle is just hollow. Um, and a lot of these, I've had several of these and they all end up breaking. Maybe I'm just too rough uh, with them, but they all just end up breaking on me. I would have preferred some kind of full tang um, blade but yeah, this could get the job done. Um, this is another thing that if I wanted to go outside and just like break it, like I could get pretty rough and break this thing. Uh, I'm guessing, that'd be my assumption. I mean, it feels solid enough. I shouldn't knock it like that, but these is just, just kind of one of those gimmicky um, survival knives. But it does have a little sheath there as well. Um, and it's just funny that I can't find a brand on this thing. Uh, unless Survival Knife is the brand. That's all that it says on there. Um, this is probably like a $10 knife, $15 knife, you know, uh, that you could probably find on Amazon. Maybe $20 you find something like this, but even that I kinda, I kinda doubt it. So it's kind of a cheap uh, knife there. It does come with a whetstone to keep it sharp though, which I like. 
So that's everything in this first compartment here. So let's go ahead, and this is the last compartment of the survival kit. Let's go ahead and see what we get in this part here as well. All right, so right off the back here, again, everything's so organized. I love that. Let's take a look. We got a mystery box here. Got a flashlight, LED flashlight. Obviously need some batteries. Here are the batteries for it. I like that they're keeping the batteries out of the flashlight as well. You know, it seems like whenever you have batteries in a flashlight for a long time, that's when they start getting corroded. Uh, you have another uh, face mask. I was wondering about this because that other little part of it only had the one face mask. So this is a second face mask. Hand warmers, yes. I talk about this in a lot of my videos. I um, You can buy an entire box of hand warmers, like, like 50 of them for 20, 30 bucks. And I did that a while ago, and I, I have hand warmers all over the place. These things are definitely really nice to keep um, around, and they have quite a few of these. So these ones will last up to eight hours. So I bring these when I go camping. It's super nice just to have the sexual comfort in my sleeping bag a lot of times. Uh, but you know, again, going back to that winter blackout down in Texas, you know, people, you know, they were like freezing to death in their own homes. People getting like frostbite in their own homes. Uh, a lot of them would have killed to have some hand warmers like this. These things can be very, very helpful. And again, not just to save your life, but just to keep you from getting frostbite, you know, and keep your fingers warm. And just that mental comfort of having something warm when you're freezing cold. You know, I've been camping when I've been really freaking cold and... Honestly, the hand warmer doesn't warm up my entire body, but just psychologically, it's just really nice having a hand warmer like that. Uh, let's keep going. So we've got another battery. Oh, bio waste. That is actually pretty smart. Wow. Danger. So, you know, so again, if you go back to the scenario that you get hit by a bad hurricane, you don't have any power of running water for four days. I was talking about how your personal hygiene just goes out the window. Well, again, what do people do when they have to go number two, when they have to go pee and they gotta go poop, you know? Um, toilets can back up really easily. And so a lot of people make some sort of emergency toilet and you could use something like this to make an emergency toilet. You know, this is also come in handy if you have, uh, bandages with blood on them or something like that you have somebody got got injured you having a, a dedicated bag like this for that biological material is not a bad idea now i'll be honest like you could just use any trash bag you don't necessarily need to have a red one with a biohazard marker um on it yeah i guess you could just really use any bag and actually that's what they include look trash bags yeah again that's super super important for personal hygiene matters um and then they've got a stethoscope, stethoscope, <laughs> whatever these things are called. Um, yeah, it's kind of an odd one. I'll be honest, I wouldn't know how to use this. I wouldn't know, you know, you use this for listening to people's breathing and listening to their heartbeats. I, I, I've never really used one. Um, I wouldn't really know what I'm listening for either, unless they include that in their survival manual. But nonetheless, you know, if if I'm listening to somebody's breathing and it doesn't sound all that great with a thesoscope, I, I don't know what I would do with that information. You know, it, if you're you're trapped, you're trapped. So I, I'm not 100% sold on including this in a survival kit, honestly. I'm not, you know, even if you have that information, like, uh-oh, he's got uh, an uneven heartbeat. If you're just relying on your own first aid kit here, what are you going to do with that information exactly? Um... Uh, yeah, so I'm not 100% sold on including this. I'm also not really 100% sold on, well, so I mean, I guess the distinction is, so people in your family know like, hey, this is really bad stuff where this is just trash. Um, moving on, so we have this guy. I am not sure what this is. Um, I mean, at first I thought it was to break glass windows you know, if you're trapped in a car, but honestly, that looks like maybe too dull of a point. This could be a self-defense weapon. It's got a keychain there. Um, I mean, I'm guessing you grab it like this, just from these grooves. I, I'm not sure what this is used for, though, honestly. Yeah, this one is kind of an odd one. I'm sure I could find it in their 
survival manual, they probably talk about what this is. Um, it, I mean, my guess is either some kind of self-defense, but that doesn't really do a whole lot, um, or for shattering glass. But again, this just doesn't feel like a very sharp tip. I had a couple of those glass breakers uh, just the other day I was playing with those. So I'm not 100% convinced on this or on, on this guy here. Um, but a lot of this other stuff I'm okay with. The knife, I feel like this is super cheap. I'm not wild about that. I would prefer a full tang blade. Um, but let's keep on going. So here you've got another water container, right? I, I'm a big fan of having these water containers and it's got um, charcoal water purification powder. Yes, you know, you can buy these tablets that'll purify water. The water will taste like crap afterwards, but it's at least should be killing the bacteria. So I'm happy that they include uh, a few of these. They have like four of these. And then they have a, another water container here, another water bladder. Yeah, add one water purification tablet or powder pack to one liter of water. This is a full water container. Before drinking, allow to sit for at least 15 minutes to kill bacteria and viruses. Allow four hours to kill cysts in very dirty water. So that's good that it has the instructions. Um, I'm guessing, yep, that's what this is for as well. Surprisingly, they only have four of those little packets in there. Uh, you would have thought that they include a lot more uh, than just those four little packets in there. So yeah, that's a good thing to have. Um, I'm, I'm cool with that. I, I'm hoping that they have more of those water purification packets. Some toilet paper. Yeah, obviously this is really uh, pretty important to have. So they, they call this their bug out bag or 72 hour kit. So this has got to be, yeah, that's probably enough toilet paper for two people for 72 hours. That's probably uh, perfectly fine. So yes, I am a fan of this. I like this a lot. These are individual water packets. So these, this is water in here um, in these individual packets. Coast Guard uh, emergency purified drinking water. That is really cool to see. I'm really happy to see that. I like that they're individual packets and kind of divvy them out to people. Uh, you know, it's not a whole lot of water, relatively speaking. I mean, that's that's how much water you get. Um, it's not a whole lot, but in an emergency situation, this would, it's a good start. Um, that is great that they're including that. I like that a lot. A lot of people don't include this. You know, what I tell people is to buy one gallon of water, or what FEMA and the Red Cross says to do, is one gallon of water per person per day for up to three days. So if you have a family of three, um, that's nine gallons of water that you need. So if you have, a, if you have this is a two person bug out bag. So two people, you know, so that's six gallons of water that you need. You need six of these. They're only giving you this much. This is probably, a fourth of a gallon. So there's nowhere near enough water for you. And you know, I'm also, even if you fill this up and you use these four purification tablets, no, five, they have five of these purification tablets in there. Uh, I'm still not sure if that's gonna be enough. If that's gonna meet FEMA's requirement of one gallon of water per person per day for three days. Now I will say that that requirement from FEMA, it doesn't expect you to drink a gallon of water. It, it, that gallon of water is for sanitation purposes and for cooking uh, food. So I'm not exactly sure what the requirement is for how much water you need to drink, but yeah, so I, I guess maybe this would be adequate if you're only looking for drinking water. Uh, it'd be close though, but in the best situation, you'd also have a few gallons of water like this in your home. So moving along, okay, good, I'm speaking too soon. So they have another one of these things um, with the water purification tablets built in. So you have five tablets, it's a one liter uh, container. So you can get five liters of clean drinking water and you have two of these, that is good. That should last you. That should be adequate for 72 hours. I spoke too soon. And then these are cool. SOS emergency food rations. That is cool. I'm gonna dive into these and do a taste test. I'm kind of curious about this now. Um, so let me just take a look here at how many calories are in one of these. Um, I can't even really see where they, oh, 410 calories per serving, which I'm guessing is one of these little blocks. So that's pretty good. And they have two of these things. And I'm pretty confident these things probably taste like crap. They're probably absolutely terrible. Um, but nonetheless, in an emergency situation, you know, this, this will keep you alive. This will keep you 
satiated and keep you going. And then they also have one uh, emergency zone thermos here, um, which is nice to have. It's funny they don't have two of these. Um, so I do like that there's a good emphasis on water, right? They have this, they have these two containers, and then they have a bladder in the backpack, and then they have those two one gallon um, containers as well. And so that's the last of the items here. Now, one additional item that is also included in this survival kit is their ultralight two-person compact dome tent. I took it out to play with it a while back and I forgot to put it back, but this is obviously gonna be very useful in an outdoor environment, but you can also use tents like this indoors during emergencies. If you watched my video, 10 hacks to stay warm during a winter blackout, one of them was to set up a tent in your living room and that's going to allow you to conserve a lot of your heat that your body puts off. It's gonna trap all that heat in a much smaller environment, which is gonna help you stay much warmer. Rather than trying to heat up an entire room, all you need to do is just heat up that little enclosed space within the tent. So this tent is included in the survival kit as well. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the survival kit. There's a, a few items that I thought were just a little cheap. And you know, that's where it really comes into you building your own survival kit. You can get your own, you know, you can buy a $50 knife to include in your survival kit. This is a $180 survival kit. And I'm pretty happy with the amount of gear that they give you. They're literally checking off all the right boxes. Um, it's just the quality of the gear. But you know, this is not a $300 survival kit or a $500 survival kit. If you go with one of those ones, you can probably get a $100 knife or a, a $70 uh, multi-tool. So you kind of, when it comes to tools, you, you kind of get what you pay for there. And you can always buy the survival kit and then upgrade your own tools as you go along. Buy a better handsaw and buy a better uh, knife and a leatherman and that sort of stuff. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I love the organization that they put into this backpack, into the survival kit. I think I need to apply a few of those elements to my own survival kits, get more organized with that. Um, I'm not crazy about the, the stethoscope. I can't say that word, that they include. I don't. I wouldn't know what the heck to do with that. I'm also, it just kind of irks me that the, uh, the uh, medical kit here is black and not like bright red. You know, the first thing I do is take some of that orange tape and stick it on the back here. I don't think I saw a fire starter in here, unless I missed it. The only matches I saw were in the handle of this thing. I don't think I saw a fire starter of some sort in here, unless, again, unless I overlooked it, which is a little unusual. They don't really have any emphasis on fire. I was kind of expecting some emergency fire, like tinder, and some matches and a lighter, something like that. Like literally a Bic lighter. A Bic lighter and a, a dollar matchbook um, would have done very well in this kit. I'm just a little surprised about that. And once again, I'll have links to this exact kit down in the description below. And I'll try to have links to as much of this gear uh, that I can find. If I can't find the specific item, then maybe I'll just try to find my recommendation for an item. For example, I don't really want to link to this knife. It's kind of cheap. I'll find my own knife and link to that my recommendation for a good survival knife, and I'll link to that down in the description below. If you guys want to check out what the 15 items are that FEMA wants you to keep in your home at all times, check out this video I did right here, breaking those down for you. Don't forget to subscribe for more prepping and survival videos. Check out my website, survivalknowhow.com, and I'll see you over in the next video.